Matthew chapter number 11. And it came to pass when Jesus had made an end of commanding his twelve disciples, he departed to teach and to preach in their city. So the disciples go out and Jesus goes out. It's like maybe a, if you set them by twos, you know, six way split, seven way split. Now when John had heard in the prison the works of Christ, he sent two of his disciples. John's in prison. He hears what's going on. And said unto him, Art thou he that should come, or do we look for another? Now John's getting a little, he's in prison. Where's the kingdom? Why am I in prison? He says, you the one? And he's going to say John the Baptist is one of the greatest men ever, and he had doubts. He had concerns. We're human. We're not God. Yeah. Jesus answered and said unto them, Go and show John again those things which you do hear and see. The blind receive their sight. So what you see, currently what's going on for these disciples of John, bring it back to John. Tell them. The lame walk. The lepers are cleansed. The deaf hear. The dead are raised up. The poor had the gospel preached to... That's a busy afternoon, isn't it? The blind received their sight. The lame walked. The lepers are cleansed. The deaf ear. The dead are raised up. The poor had the gospel... You don't ever see that on a doctor's schedule. And look how much a doctor gets and Jesus didn't charge for nothing. And it's all 100%. And to the poor people, he gives the gospel. How's that? The kingdom's coming. And blessed is he, whosoever shall not be offended in me. There's a lot of offense going on. The Sadducees, the Pharisees, and all that. Man, they're getting angry. As they departed, the two disciples of John, Jesus began to say unto the multitudes concerning John. Right, he turns to the crowd. What went he out in the wilderness to see? Who'd you want to be, who'd you go out there for? A reed shaking in the wind, this little tiny little leaf? It just goes with the wind? But what ye out for to see? A man clothed in soft raiment? Silky. Nice. Behold, they that wear soft clothing, Luke 7:25 are in king's houses well you know fine rich apparel that's what he's talking about but remember he came in camel loins and a leather girdle he was a rough but what when you have to see a prophet yeah i say unto you and more than a prophet for this is he of whom it is written uh oh scripture spoke about John the Baptist behold I send my messenger before my face Isaiah 40 verse 3 Malachi 3 1 which shall prepare the way before me and that's exactly what John the Baptist done and when Jesus shows up behold the Lamb of God which take away the sin of the world John prepared the nation the people Verily I say unto you, among them that are born of women, there have not risen a greater than John the Baptist. Ever hear somebody, I'm the best there is, some guy saying it? Well, according to Jesus Christ, that title belongs to John the Baptist. Jesus Christ was born of, of a woman. He doesn't even raise it. He puts John the Baptist. Notwithstanding. Uh-oh. He that is least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. You got to be humble. The humbler you are by God, the better place you will have by God. Now, I'm not talking about false humility. I'm talking about you just, it's not about you. It's never about you. 
and from the days of John the Baptist, now we're going to do some dating, unto now, when John started preaching, unto right now, the kingdom of heaven suffered violence, and violent take it by force. How do you get a prosperity gospel from what we've read so far? You know what? You know why John's in prison? He walked up to the king and said, "That woman you married was not supposed to be the woman you married. That's your brother's wife." And put him in prison. You know why he lost his head? Because that woman got upset at what he said at the word of God. From the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom has suffered violence, and violent take it by force. For all the prophets and the law prophesied unto John. Uh-oh. So when John the Baptist came, something happened with the law. What? I have no idea. Then Jesus showed up to fulfill the law. What happened? And I mean, what happened with the law and salvation. Well, there's a problem when Jesus shows up. You ever know it's in Israel? Not the nations, the Gentiles. You ever know it's in Israel it's hard for people to die? They die, he shows up and calls them out of the grave again. Yo, it ain't time for you to die. They had a funeral profession going to the... T Jesus stopped and said, get up, young man. You no. Know. When you reach John the Baptist unto... The, the resurrected Christ, you are in a dispensation that is weird. Because there is God. And no one is dying. And yet Jesus will send them back to the priest. Jesus will tell them to go do what the law told them to do. In many cases. But we do see one thing. Faith. 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 We saw in chapter 9. Faith. And it, ye will receive it. They did not. If they had re received it, this is a lie which was for to come. Did you just get that what Jesus said a mouthful? If they would have received Jesus Christ, history would have changed. The entire gospels would have changed. The entire events of life would have been changed. We be in glory right now. And you can't even picture what would have happened with the Gospels if they truly had received Jesus Christ. Because if he would have been Elijah. Alright, Jesus Christ would still have to die, bury, and rose from the grave. That's according to scriptures. Upon that, you would have Jacob's trouble somewhere around 33 AD. Let's say 33 AD as a, as a, as a date that is... That we can number and be equal and even. Seven years tribulation period would, br would bring you to 40 AD. The thousand year reign of Jesus Christ would end 1040 AD. And in 2016 would be impossible because there's no time in heaven. We be in glory right now. New Jerusalem, new heavens, or the new earth. You remember in the middle of this ministry, who's going to pop up? Moses and Elijah pop up, don't they? Now, don't you think that would have been kind of weird if, if the nation had received them? There's Moses and Elijah as prophesied in Malachi. But they didn't receive him. So Jesus checks with them. Everything's been fulfilled to the point. I go to the cross and die. And what we learn in chapter 10 is when you guys go out in the book of Acts... You're going to be persecuted. You're going to be whipped. You're going to be killed. All the apostles except one died a valiant death. And I forgot to mention another thing too. Was, you know another why there was, there was a persecution in the book of Acts? Jesus told them in, in Acts chapter 1. Jerusalem, Judea, and the outer parts of the world. You know what they were doing in the book of Acts early? They were staying in Jerusalem. Jesus had to send 
little persecution to get their butts moving. See, persecution makes the church grow. Check it out in the book of Acts. And there was added to the church. And the numbers, you check those times out, they were persecuted. Why is the church not getting numbers today in America? Why are there not revivals in America? Because we're not being persecuted. And they'll say, oh, you can't bring your Bible to school. You can't pray. That's not persecution. There are nations right now, they're being persecuted under the Catholics, they're being persecuted under Islam, and I bet you the Word of God is growing. So, John the Baptist would have been Elijah, according to Jesus. John the Baptist and Elijah, compare them to sometimes you just want something to do. Compare who they are, what they are, and what they said, and their character. He that hath ears to hear, let him hear. Now, 13.9, 13.43, Mark 4.9, 4.23, 7.16, Luke 8.8, 8, 14.35, and I believe to the seven churches in Revelation, you have that, him that has ears to hear, let him hear. You know what that means? Shut up and listen. He just warned Israel. If you were to believe who I am, Jacob's trouble is going to come, the millennium is going to come, and boom. There would be no church age. All Old Testament prophecies, all of them, would have been fulfilled within this time. But I think the words were, we have no king but Caesar. You know how many years that... that that big mouth spoke take at least 30 years minus 2016 that's how many years it's been to we have no king but Caesar okay you don't want Jesus Christ remember what Jesus said uh, you killed our pigs get out of here okay boys let's get back in the boat come on you want Caesar okay I'll go to the cross Paul he put up with the Jews. He put up with the Jews. He put up with the Israelites. He tried. He prayed. He cried. He... I've had enough with you guys. I am clean of the blood of my fingers. I'm going to the Gentiles. John the Baptist is an interesting character. Do you realize is Elijah just showed up one day? And you know who Elijah rebuked? King Ahab. You know what King Ahab had? He had a wicked wife. Check the check out again on your own study. Something in industry. Get yourself a concordance, get yourself a computer or something. Look up John the Baptist and look up Elijah. It's a wonderful study. But whereunto shall I liken this generation? He's talking to the multitudes again. The disciples are gone. It is like unto children sitting in the markets. Not that they had open markets. You've seen pictures of them. And calling unto their fellows, calling all their buddies and all that. And saying, We have piped unto you to play the pipes, played musical instruments. You have not danced. We have mourned unto you sorrow, tears, pride. You have not lamented. You, you're not reacting to what we're doing. We don't get up and start dancing to the bongo man. We just continue to preach the gospel. Well, why aren't you enjoying his music? Why don't you, when you, when we have a band, why don't you guys get up and start getting naked and, and start dancing? Why don't you do that? We got beer over here. Why don't you come over here and grab a cup and start drinking? For John came neither eating nor drinking. Good clean guy. Just give him some locusts. He was happy. Dip him in some honey. And they said, He hath a devil. Really?
He preached the gospel. He's done everything God has told him to do. And Jesus said he is one of the greatest, if not the greatest man that's ever been born of a woman. And the people say, he's got a devil. You know, people probably think I got a devil for preaching. And all I'm doing is doing what God, I read to them out of the Bible and I quote the scripture. I may attack the, the Bongo man. I may be wrong with that. I may attack the newspaper guy there. I may be wrong with that. But everything else is all scripture. I'm just trying to compare the Bible to the newspapers. That's all I'm trying to do. He got a devil. The Son of Man. That's Jesus Christ. See, he's telling the people, you know, you're hearing the, the news. The newspapers are writing. John has a devil. Don't go see him. He's possessed. Ooh. Who would eat locusts? Half naked. Then down to the beach of Daytona Beach lately. The Son of Man came. Just Jesus Christ eating and drinking. John didn't get with a group of people. We just read that Matthew joined in, right? And Matthew threw a party at his house, a dinner. And called all his friends and Jesus' and his disciples sat there and ate. And the Pharisees had a problem. The scribes didn't like it. Ew, those people. The Son of Man came eating and drinking. And they said, Behold, a man gluttonous. That's a lie. Sinless Jesus. I don't think he was guilty of gluttony. Excessive eating. That's what gluttonous means. A wine bibbler. That's a great drinker. You think that was Jesus? You know how you shut people up? Didn't Jesus make the water into wine? Yeah, but show me where he drank it. Uh -uh. They are saying Jesus is a gross eater. He's gross in drinking. And a friend of publicans and sinners. Well, go back to, to chapter number 10. Was it 10? He called me, was it 9? I think it's 9. Chapter 9, verse 10. And it came to pass, Jesus said to me in the house, Behold, many publicans and sinners came and sat down with him and his disciples. And when the Pharisees saw it, they said unto his, his disciples, Why eateth your master with you, publicans and sinners? And Jesus goes on. Well, who's got the problem? The Pharisees. A friend of publicans and sinners. That's just what we just read. When he was seated at Matthew's house with Matthew's friends. But wisdom is justified of her children. There you go. John and Jesus were wise. These other people are not wise. They don't recognize who John is. They don't recognize who Jesus Christ is. The fool has said in his heart, there is no God. Take wisdom in this, what it said right here, and foolish, study the entire book of Proverbs on wisdom and foolish. Then began he, Jesus. What would Jesus do? Upbraid means to charge, to reproach, To upbraid the cities wherein most of his mighty works were done. This is where he's doing all his works. Because they repented not. He goes in there. He's healing all these people. He's raising the dead. He's preaching and not responding. Like Daytona Beach Farmer's Market. And I try to tell him, just because, you know, I'm there with the, with the Bible. You're without excuse. Woe. This is the first woe in Matthew. Pay attention to woes in the Bible. Corenzim. So Jesus visited a city called Corenzim. Woe unto thee, Bethsaida. I got a whole book about that city. For the mighty works, verse number five, the mighty works were done in you had been done in Tyre or Sidon. Tyre is destroyed. It's gone. Sidon's gone. 
They would have repented long ago in sackcloth and ashes. Listen, what I'm doing to your cities right now, if it had been done in Tyre, those cities would have got right and would have repented. Think of Nineveh. You know what Jesus is going to say to the people of Daytona Beach? You know the Daytona Beach of old, when you had uh, Whitfield coming through? Maybe, those city, maybe the cities got right during that time. You say, you know what? I bet you if I removed Mr. Hayward over to, I don't know what city or town, I bet you they would repent at his preaching. But you have him here telling my gospel, my book, my son, my salvation. Woe unto you. Because you have not repented. You guys, when we preach the gospel, we're putting a big woe on those people. And it takes a lot of prayer for them to get right and try to do what God wants them to do because we see their damage. And I tell them uh, at least once a month that you are now without excuse. When you tell somebody, think about the one person in your life. I don't... Just think of one person you told them about the gospel. And that person never gets saved. Woe be to that person had you go to tell the cashier at Walmart. If you were able to open your mouth at that cashier but the line was so big, that cashier may have got saved listening to you. But woe to your friend, your family, your co-worker, your boss, whoever it was that you told the gospel. Woe be to that person. some serious things and in the great white throne judgment we may be called as witnesses against these people that guy with the bongos today he's under conviction because I'm not your enemy yes you are when I try to preach God's word you bum the bunk the bunk 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 and tell your people say listen he only preaches about 45 minutes an hour of that wait for him to be done that guy who, who's been uh, giving us all kinds, he's not giving us a hard time no more. He's offering now strawberries. But I say unto you, it shall be more tireable and tire and time at the day of judgment, great white throne judgment, than for you. You know why tire and time is not going to get such a big on judgment day? Because Jesus Christ was not in their city. America will be judged far more worse than Sierra Leone. I don't think Sierra Leone has stores where you can buy Bibles in their language. They got you got to rely on a small group of missionaries over there who've got to drive bumpy, kajupi mountains, roads that takes days and nights and years to get to these people. Most of them are illiterate. Most of them are illiterate. They don't have the education. America, you pick up www.bible.com or whatever it is. There it is. We still got libraries. You can go and pull a Bible out and go sit down and quiet and read it. Woe to America. And thou Capernaum, another place where Jesus visited, which are exalted unto heaven. Babel. This is a great city. It's built. Skyscrapers, maybe. It's praise and honor. We're number one. We're exalted. Yay! Shall be brought down to... I can't say that. People say Jesus never said that word. Jesus, we have been told many times... My children can remember from the days we entered the street, Jesus never preached about hell. What is that word? And he says an entire city will be brought down to hell. 
Now, I'm hearing reports today that there are people, you know, 45, a lot of people are getting saved. I don't think, I, I, I don't believe that. Not with, with the church age way it is today. If it's true, okay, it's between God and them. But Jesus said there's entire cities here when Jesus is doing the preaching. Jesus is doing the healing. Jesus is doing the work. They are not repenting. Now, if Jesus couldn't get him saved, you know what I'm talking about, by his ministry. How do you think we're going to get, oh yeah, just say this prayer. Oh yeah, here, here's a candy bar. Oh, here, here's a little ribbon. Oh yeah, we'll, we'll get puppets, we'll get magic, we'll get faith. We'll just do, and now they're saved. Jesus never done none of that. For the mighty works, what's the mighty works? Verse 5. Mighty works, which have been done in thee, so Jesus did the works in Capernaum, had been done in Sodom. Ooh, big, nasty, wicked Sodom. That's the hell on earth for Christians today in the Bible. Sodom, the wicked Sodom. It would have remained unto this day. Oh, look at that. If Jesus Christ would have walked into Sodom and do his works, Jesus said Sodom would got saved. They would still be a city. I think Jesus knows what he's talking about. But here I am, the Son of God, and you rejected me. You're going to get worse than what Sodom's going to get. So next time you hear someone say, Oh, the wickedness, remember Capernaum is going to get the worst of Sodom judgment. Sodom won't get the deepest H-E-L-L -L than Capernaum will get, according to Jesus Christ. But I say unto you, that it shall be more tolerable for the land of Sodom in the day of judgment than for thee. Ooh, that's a mouthful. At that time, Jesus answered, who? Who did he answer? And said, I thank thee, O Father, Lord of heaven and earth. Not according to the guy that we talked to today. Because thou hast hid these things from the wise and prudent. Those are good people. And hast revealed them unto babes. The simple ones of Proverbs 1. See, simple doesn't mean you're stupid. It means you just haven't grown. It's something that wise and prudent people can't get. You got all these Pharisees, religious people running around. And they're not getting it. They've got it reversed. They're calling evil good, John, as a devil. Jesus is a drunkard. And they're calling the good evil. America even so father for so it seems good in that I said he's, he's cast judgment upon these people and then he starts speaking to God all things are delivered unto me of my father here son have it all Satan tried to offer him that did you get that Matthew 4 Forget it, Satan. You wait to see what my father is going to give me. You know, everything you offer me right now, Satan, is going to crumple up. It's going to burn with a fervent heat. And God is going to make it all new. And then he's going to give me that. Okay? I'm going to get some land. I'm going to get a universe. I'm going to get all that you have not even stepped on. Job 1 and 2. Satan went amongst the earth, up and down the earth. And no man knoweth the Son. Well, that's a pretty bold statement because there he is. You ever have anybody ever ask you, well, if Jesus would show up to me, I'll believe. If God were to make him, I've had that, a few people in my life. If God were to make his presence known to me right now, I will believe. You ever take him over to Exodus? Numbers? Deuteronomy? How about Deuteronomy? And it was what? 
17 days to to the city, I think it was, but it, in the 40th year, 40 years they had to take to get in the promised land, and they saw God, and God fed them, and God gave them water, and God blessed them. God was a fire by night, and a pillar by cloud by day. God protected them, and they still didn't believe. Jesus Christ is walking, talking, and doing miracles, verse number 5, and they still don't know who he is. And he's been doing works in one, two, three cities. And they still will not repent at his teaching. So you're going to walk in a Baptist church and we got 5,000 people saved this week. Really? Jesus didn't even get those numbers. We have just a word. But the Father... Neither knows any man the Father save the Son, and he to whomsoever the Son will reveal him. You know, you cannot know Jesus Christ and God unless the Holy Spirit has drawn you. Let me read. Right. Pray that God will send people into the harvest. Pray that the Holy Spirit will work before someone goes out evangelizing. Don't pray that people get saved. Pray the Holy Spirit will guide them. Because if the Holy Spirit does not do his work in their hearts, nothing's going to happen. Now, they can, I forget what, they can either sear the Holy Spirit, they can quench the Holy Spirit, and there's another one I can't remember. The Holy Spirit is there because God is long suffering. He's not willing any should perish. But when the Holy Spirit goes in their hearts, and that's their free will to receive or to reject. And if they reject, they're not going to know who the Son is. These people have rejected God. They don't know who the Son is. There he is standing there. I feel sorry for those Roman soldiers that are going to stand before Jesus Christ, the great white throne judgment. Hi, guys. Oh, by the way, uh, Fred, you're the one that punched me in the face the third time. Right by this cheek right here. Eric, you're the one that punched me right in the nose. Remember they, remember they blindfolded him and said, who hit you? Imagine God telling them at the Great White Throne, Judge, okay, you're the one that hit me. Now verse 28 to 30. Come unto me. Look at that. You're going to go to hell. You're going to burn in hell. These cities have better chances than you have. Come on to me. That's an invitation. It's not over till you die. Don't quit praying for somebody until they die. Don't pray for dead saints. They can't do it. Pray for the living ones. Pray for the living souls. All ye that labor and are heavy burden, heavy laden, excuse me. Burden down. The Pharisees are putting such a religious load on these people. You can't go so far. You can't carry your bed. You can't do this. You got to do this. You got to exchange your money for this. We won't take that money. It has to be that. It has to. Man, they are so under religious realm here. Do I burn a candle or do I put a quarter in the box? Do I say four Hail Marys? Do I say, what do I do? And Jesus says to all that religion, come on to me. You're laboring. You're heavy laying. I will give you rest. There is rest in Jesus, not religion. Take my yoke upon you. Now that doesn't, a yoke doesn't sound like, you know, wait a minute. I'm heavy laden and laboring. You're going to give me, now you tell me to put a yoke on me? But Jesus is in that yoke with you. Take my yoke upon you. A yoke has two places for animals. 
and learn of me. He said, you just didn't know who I was. Come on to me. I'll give you rest. Get in my yoke and we can learn together about each other. For I am meek and lowly in heart. And ye shall find rest unto, unto your soul. Man, you may have to do labor. You may get persecuted. Remember we read in chapter 10? You may have to die. You may have to carry your cross. But your soul will rest assured in Jesus Christ. For my yoke is easy. That's almost an oxymoron. Yoke, easy. But if you get in the yoke with Jesus Christ, who has to undo that yoke to get you out? You can't. You're incapable of getting yourself out. And my burden is light. As Christians, the, the church aid, we're told just go you know, all the world and preach the gospel. And then when somebody gets saved, train them up, raise them up as big. Well, how hard is that? I mean, it's a lot easier than raising a real infant, baby, child. To, I mean, you don't have to change their diapers or anything, do you? You just take the Bible with them, show them what the Bible says, help them grow. Teach them how to go out and get others. That's not very hard. But when you go out witnessing evangelism, whatever God has called you to do, you better be in that yoke with Jesus and, and not by yourself. You know, people will say, well, Jesus is my co-pilot. You're in the wrong seat. Undo your seat belts. Stand up. Tell Jesus to sit in the pilot seat. You sit down in the co-pilot seat. Put the seat belt on. Let him let him fly the airplane. Because if you are the pilot, you're the one that's in charge, and Jesus will sit there and just let you do it till you crash the plane. But if you put Jesus in charge and put Jesus in the yoke, that row that you will produce in the field will be straight. It will be narrow, and it will get you right where you're supposed to be going. You know what happens when you take a yoke, and you're looking around, and you're not paying attention? When you look at that roll that you've done, it'll be... Be crooked. It won't be uneven. It won't be right. It's more work doing crooked for the animal. Jesus is the straight and narrow. Jesus is the lighter. Jesus is the leader, but he needs your help. 